for say sailing with the motor on the starboard side being the windward side and the boat is heeling away from the motor you can still get the motor down in the water while motor sailing and note that there are a lot of cables leading to the motor and these cables lead inside the bracket and the top of the bracket is cut out so as to allow one to reach in and arrange for these umbilical cords that come out of the cockpit area to reach the motor and there are several of them. They come out of the hull, are securely fastened up underneath the wing and lead in over the top of the bracket and then down into it. One of them is the fuel line, one is the, the double high tension line direct from the batteries to the starter. This one is other wiring and there's a quick there's a quick disconnect on that one because there are many terminals inside the motor. Make, remember to disconnect it here instead of inside the motor. And then here are the shifting cables for forward reverse and throttle. And they go into this side of the motor and they're pretty stiff. And they're vulnerable to exposure to the sun. So I've wrapped them up with duct tape and goobered them up with stuff there to keep them from being damaged by the sun and salt. Cables don't last forever. If you have difficulty shifting, it uh, may, may be necessary to uh, take the cables out of the motor, point them up, fasten them on here so they're pointing, fasten them on here so they're pointing up, and dribble oil into them while working the shifting lever and throttle lever from the cockpit to get oil down into the cable. I usually run the motor haul up around the secondary winch here get up on the running board where I can get a good stance and really haul on the bugger. You gotta pull pretty hard. It takes three hauls like so to get it up. You can work on the propeller while standing on the swim step. If a line gets tangled in the propeller you can actually remove the propeller from here to untangle. It will stall the engine without doing any damage and you can get back underway. Now these are calm conditions, but you can see that the V bottom dead rise in the bracket will part the waves to protect the motor from inundation without pounding. And this works even in a steep chop. Okay, let's have a look at Scrimshaw's outboard kick-up rudder. It's a grand and a glorious thing. And boy, if that ain't a Georgia O'Keeffe, I don't know what is. <laughs> this skeg, this much of it, swings down to lodge in that trunk. And when she swings down part way, the rudder will still steer so that you can navigate into very shallow water. However, when you pull the rudder all the way down, that thing draws about four feet of water, and believe me, it has a lot of authority over the direction of the boat. And then this is the axis along which the, the rudder actually articulates because the skeg is fixed. The skeg does not articulate in the steering operation. The rudder and the skeg are both exposed underwater from this point down. And note that part of the blade area is forward of the axis, giving a so-called balanced rudder. Note that the steering cables run through the same blocks that were used in the original steering system inside the transom. They just moved out and they come over to a small quadrant on the rudder. And that quadrant has to be located as close as possible to the pivot pin. Here's the pivot pin for the skeg, the point around which the rudder kicks up. So that the rudder will steer in the half up position and it'll pull all the way up without binding in the cables. For pulling the rudder up, you can just grab the line and haul on it and it'll come up part way until it, its buoyancy uh, is starting to come out of the water. And then you need at least two, cleat, two turns on this, this winch and through that cleat. And I get the winch handle out. You can pull it up by hand. 